All right. All right. All right. I hope y'all are excited. I am super excited to be here with you tonight. And I'll just introduce myself real quick. My name is Whitney Nicely, and this is How to Be Successful in Real Estate without a license. So we're going to go over a couple of myths, a couple secrets, and I'm going to let y'all in on the real deal tonight. Okay. And you're in the right place if you're interested, even slightly, about how to make more money, increase your net worth, retire sooner, and just generally have more fun and more time to be with the family. All right. So let's get started. How to buy houses without a real estate license because y'all it is completely unnecessary to have a real estate license if all you want to do is buy houses you don't need to go to real estate school or regular real estate school i should say if all you want to do is be an investor my goal by the end of this is to show you exactly how easy it is to be successful in real estate, to build up the residual income that you deserve and you want without ever stepping foot inside regular real estate school. And I also want you to know the money that you could spend going to regular real estate school, the time you're going to have invested in it before you can even turn a profit if your first deal has a profit. So y'all stay with me here. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat and I will wait until the end to answer all the questions that you're dropping in the chat. So whenever you have a question, go ahead, put it in the chat bar. And if you want to, let me know where you're from, okay? I know a lot of people in Texas are really excited about real estate. I'll tell you right now, I'm in Georgia. Most of my houses, all of my apartments, they're in Tennessee. I'm looking into Florida properties these days. So y'all just tell me in the chat box there where you're from. And make sure you stay until the end because I'm going to give you the secret. Well, it's not even a secret. But it's the reason why you should buy houses and then live in a rental. And how you can do it legally. So stay until the end. I'm going to show you, talk you through those steps because most people don't understand it. Most people are under the impression that they need to get a mortgage. They need to sign on the dotted line for the next 30 years, and that's how they're going to be free and clear on their primary house. That's also how a lot of people think they're going to buy rental properties, and it just ain't going to happen, y'all. That is the old, slow, and boring way to get into real estate. And I don't know if you know much about me, but I am not old, slow, or boring. So stay until the end. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. One thing that I do want to cover is what's going to make this webinar different than any other webinar you've ever been on. And the first thing I got to tell you is you got to put up those cell phones. I know maybe you're a woman and you're trying to do 16 different things. Maybe you're listening to me while you're finishing prepping for dinner. Maybe you're listening while you're driving the kids to school or to church or to practice or whatever it is. And maybe you're a guy. And I know that my husband, if he's watching a webinar, he has to be fully in tune with it. So that's what I want y'all to do right now. Pay attention. This is going to be good stuff. And I promise it's not going to take all night. But if you get lost on the first step, the next two won't make any sense. So y'all hang with me, pay attention, and let's get this thing rolling. Again, my name is Whitney Nicely. That's what I look like. Took that picture last month. Um, my assistant and I just went to the park, took some pictures. That's really what I look like. So when y'all come to meet me, when you buy my book, when you, you know, sign up and meet me in person, do a one-day workshop with me or see me at a seminar, that's really what I'm going to look like. No photoshopping. I am the queen of weird real estate. And I am proud to say that I do weird real estate. When people say that I'm in real estate, I correct them and tell them that I'm on the weird side of it. I don't do banks. I don't do money down. I don't do credit checks. I'm not showing people houses on Sunday afternoons. And I'm going to show you how you can really appreciate the weird side of real estate also because it makes sense. It's only weird until you get into it. And then it's a beautiful thing. And it's the only way that I was able to do 50 deals in the last 24 months while the rest of the people my age, on my level, with my education, started in real estate when I did. They did like six deals. And I did 50. 
because of a system, <laughs> because of some confidence, and because I'm a little bit like a rat on acid, and I just get things done. I do want to clarify and specify, though, that I am a real estate broker. I am also a real estate auctioneer. I am a licensed general contractor, y'all. I have education and certificates coming out my ears. In fact, I got married last year, and I told my husband that that was going to be the last license I got for a while. And he laughed, and we've made it a year, and I haven't got another license. But you don't have to suffer through all that stuff like I did, okay? You don't need to be a real estate broker to be a good real estate investor. And you certainly don't need to be a real estate auctioneer to buy properties at auction. And I got to tell you all that I graduated from UT Knoxville in 2007, and getting my general contractor's license was harder than it was to get out of UTK. All right, so please don't tell me that you think you need a general contractor's license to flip houses because you don't. I've already gone through the hard part for you. Let me show you how you can easily, quickly, and have some fun while you gather 17 houses, 19 apartment units, and seven chunks of land. And I say, you know, seven chunks of land because I kind of forget. I don't know if I've got seven acres or if I've got seven different chunks and they equal 17 acres, I've got lots of just random tracts of land that I've collected in the last couple years. And that's kind of cool. All right. Some people have stamps that they've collected. Y'all, I have property. I collect property and vintage Hermes scarves, but we're talking about property this time. I've done a lot of things right. I have been in the right place at the right time and got the right kind of deal, and I have done a lot of things wrong, okay? I don't know if you know this or not, but when you decide that you want to be in real estate, whether you do want to have a license or you just want to buy houses, you want to create residual income, you want to retire early, you want to spend more time with the kids, you want to have large chunks of change just coming into your bank account once or twice a month, you're either going to do a lot of things wrong or you're gonna learn from my mistakes. And unfortunately, I've already paid the cost for these things, so you don't have to do it, all right? To be successful in real estate, you do not have to do all the trial and error. You do not have to do things the boring, old-fashioned way. Not anymore. Imagine if you had a business right now, today, and all of your communication was done via the United States Postal Service, the USPS, and a fax machine. People would laugh in your face. Your business would collapse. There is no way at this date and time that you can be effective and communicate effectively quickly enough with your vendors, your buyers, your sellers, your customers, your people if you don't have the technology available and that's what it feels like to me when you tell me that you're gonna go be a real estate investor and your first stop is to go to real estate school because you don't need that you're not gonna learn anything at real estate school that I can't teach you to put you ahead of the curve to making more money faster than you imagined it was gonna be possible without going through all the trial and error, without going through all the fees and the tests and the classes and then keeping the continuing education, all of that stuff is not necessary. Here's a couple things that I've learned from doing this for the last seven years. It's not complicated, okay? Real estate is so easy. Think about it like this. You meet somebody, they have a house that they want to sell. You have recently decided that you wanted to buy houses. You are a perfectly matched pair from this moment on. All you do from now on is try to buy this person's house. That's how simple it has to be. You write up a contract. You say, I'm going to buy it for this much. They're going to sell it to me on this day. Bada bing, bada boom. It's all done. But people want to make it so complicated. They want to put 18 extra steps into it, and it just doesn't have to be that way. 
one of the things I like to say is that I put the fun back in real estate, but I also put the funds back in real estate. And that's why people like real estate. It's just sticks and bricks until you put people in it. And I've narrowed it down to two simple questions that will close on any deal anywhere across the country as long as you're talking to the people who own the sticks and bricks. Maybe you're a used car salesman, maybe you know a couple used car salesmen, but when people get into real estate, one of the things that holds them back is that they don't want to sound like a sleazy guy on a commercial trying to sell you a used car and they're skimming over the details. A lot of sellers don't want to talk to investors because they feel like they're going to be trying to steal their house. It just gives everybody these crummy, slimy, gross feelings. And the best way to do that is to talk to a seller like you'd talk to a friend. Make sure that you are helping them in whatever it is they need to be help, helped with. And you'll never have to feel like a slimy used car salesman. I used to sell dump trucks. Can you believe that? I sold dump trucks for my mom's company for like five years once I graduated from UT. And I was really good at it. Those dirty old men like talking to a cute young lady. But then I got into real estate and I had to alter the way I was talking to people and the way I was communicating and just everything about it was different and so much better. And once you can figure out how to help people and buy their houses and make a lot of money and not feel slimy, you won't ever stop. You'll go anywhere in America and buy houses. You'll be helping people left and right. In fact, I hope you're helping people left and right. That's why I've been so successful. I truly help people. I help people who want to get out of a situation that they just don't like anymore. It doesn't have to be bad. It doesn't have to be terrible. Most of my people have free and clear houses that they just don't want anymore. Some people, believe this or not, forget that they own houses. And they will sell it to me. Because I remind them of a house that they've forgotten about. It's just sticks and bricks to them. But when I can talk to them like a person. They're more than willing to let me have that house. Now, I didn't just wake up one morning and say, this is the way, the truth, and the light. That's a different sermon. I had to go about it all wrong. It was so embarrassing. It was a lot of hard work, a lot of sweat and tears. And you, you're going to get to cheat and get all this information that I have the easy way. So let's cover the hard way real quick, okay? You tell me that you want to be a real estate investor, and the first thing you're going to do is go to real estate school. Do you know how much that costs? I mean, have you figured in after you pay for the exam, and heaven forbid you fail the exam, then you have to pay for it again? Not to mention, if you're working a regular job, a J-O-B, just over broke right now, you can only go to the testing center Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. So you're going to have to take off work from your J-O-B, lose time, lose money just to go take a test that you're probably, maybe, going to fail. And by the way, what did you even learn in real estate school? You didn't learn anything about houses. I'll tell you, the best thing, and ask any agent this across the country, 43,560 uh, square feet in an acre. That's what it is. All right? That's the number one thing that you're going to learn in real estate school. It's not going to be how to buy houses. It's not going to be how to get a listing. It's not going to be anything about investing and how to retire and what gives better profits. It's all going to be how to pass the exam. That's what you learn in real estate school. How to pass the real estate exam. The other thing you're going to have to do is buy real estate insurance, depending on your market, depending on your MLS, depending on your personal needs and what you have going on. That could be $500 to $2,500 just for insurance before you can even get a license. Then you have to pay the state. Some states, it's $50. Pay the lady at the end of the counter. Other states, 
$2,600 every year that you want to hold a real estate license. Are you prepared for that too? Also, let's say you go to real estate school in August, like I did. You take your exams in late October, early November, like I did, because there's a waiting time. After you get out of school, then you have to get all this other stuff done. You have to find a broker. Then you have to go sit for the exam. Pass, first time, great. But now it's, you know, first in November. Now I have to send my stuff to the state. It was the end of January before I got my paperwork back from the state that said, congratulations, now you have a real estate license. So from going to school in August to actually getting my license in January, honey, you better believe I had a job during that time. Are you prepared to wait three to six months before you can even get a listing? Before you can even tell people that you are a licensed real estate agent? If you just quit your job last week, you don't have that kind of time, all right? And so I got my license in January. I don't know about where you are, but in January in East Tennessee, ain't much happening, all right? In fact, it's going to be March, April, May before people start listing their houses again. And then once you list a house, it's got to sit on the market. Yes, we all know people that they have put a house on the market and that day they've got a contract and they've closed the next week. But let's think about the regular, normal, status quo, new real estate agent just got out of school, freshly minted license. They're looking at three to six months before they get a listing, three to six months on the market. And then they're going to wait another three to six months to close this thing. And I got to tell you, that's where I was. All of those three to six month time periods, I took six. See, I got my license in January of 12. I didn't get my first listing until July of 13. That's like... Was that 16 months? I don't know. That's a really effing long time to wait. All right. And then it took another couple weeks before we closed. And oh, I'm going off on tangent. I'll get back to this one in just a half a second. But y'all stay with me. The hard way to get into real estate is to do this path. To go to real estate school, to get the to get started, to get the licensing, to get the listing, and then to go to close. And all the stress that comes along with closing. So do you want the easy way that doesn't require you to suffer through all of that waiting, all of that education, all of those lost days at your J-O-B? Yes. Yes, you do. I see it in the comments. Yes. Tell me, tell me, tell me. So let me just tell you that in the past 24 months, I've closed over seven figures of residential real estate. And I never tapped in to my license. Seven figures, that's over a million dollars. Okay? And a lot of times when real estate agents tell you that they're in the seven figure earner club, what they mean is, you know, in some markets that takes two houses to get into the seven figures. In my market, I mean, I have on my books waiting to be paid over seven figures, not seven figures in commissions, not seven figures made up money, seven figures coming to me on a monthly basis because I knew what I was doing and I didn't use a license. Now, I do want to tell you right here that I am, like I said earlier, a rat on acid. I get out. I get stuff done. I am an action taker. I will impress anybody with my action taking abilities. Even if I don't have the full story of what we're going after, I'm going to get out there and get it done. This is not a get rich quick kind of scheme. This is not a part time kind of thing. Like when I talk to you about real estate, I get really, really excited about it because it really is my passion. When you tell me it's your passion because you watch the HETV shows, I'm laughing at you on the inside. I love real estate.
and I would love for you to love real estate with me. So let me tell you the secrets. My secrets. You're not going to hear these anywhere else. I can make more working a day a month, working a day a week with a creative financing deal than I can in a month with normal real estate. And I will not need any other agents. I will not need any other networking events. I will not need anything but my laptop to find these deals. You don't have to go knocking on doors. You don't have to do anything weird. You don't have to, you know, send out a whole bunch of letters. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. Also, when I get these properties, yeah, I go look at them when I buy them. But when I turn around and sell them, I'm hands off. I don't meet people out at properties. I don't show houses on Sundays. I have a lot to do. I have a husband. I have stepkids. I have a dog. I have parents. I have friends. I got other things to do than sit in some empty house for two hours waiting on maybe just somebody to show up. Y'all got a lot to do and not much time to do it. And the last thing that I need to tell you to do is donate empty time to ifs and coulds and woulds. Ain't nobody got time for that. I only need a little bit of traffic on my website. I only need two or three phone calls a day. And I can take those from my office, from my pajamas, from the beach, from the lake, from the uh, field trip, from the kids' games. I can do any of this from anywhere. As long as I have <laughs> cell phone service and internet. <laughs> so let's dig into this just a little bit more. How do I make so much more money with the weird real estate than the normal real estate? I mean, we've all been taught that the normal way is the way to go, right? If you're not questioning the way that we've been doing business for the last hundred years and watching other people make tens of thousands of millions of dollars on things that were just developed in the last couple of years, you're not paying attention. Or you're not paying enough attention because the weird way of doing business, the weird way of doing real estate is coming up. It's on the rise. Nobody wants to go put 20% down and sign their life away at a bank if they can figure out a different way to do it. So let me show you. My first listing is... Like I said, 18 months in the process, okay? From the time I decided really and told my people that I was going to go to real estate school and be a real estate investor, from the time I got my listing, it took 18 months. Then it sat on the market for three months, and then once we had a contract, it took another three months to close. And I made 1200 bucks, which I had to split with my broker. Now, is $1,200 a month enough to uh, get you really excited? Y'all tell me in the comments. I mean, $1,200 a month, would that change your life? What would you do with $1,200? Nothing. <laughs> You'd use it to pay your mortgage. $1,200 isn't going to change anybody's life. It's kind of pathetic. But it's where I was. That's how much I made on my first listing. As a real estate agent, I did the calculations. I was going to have to have like five closings a week to live the kind of life I wanted to live. I was going to have to have three closings every week just to replace my income. And that was going to be a lot of work. This stuff is tough. Okay? There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that goes into having a real estate license. I had to find a better way. After Emma's house closed, that's the seller that I was working with, I got into lease options. And in February of 2014, on February 28th of Feb uh, 2014, I got my first lease option under contract. 
two weeks from the time I went to school to learn what to do to sitting in a seller's house and signing a contract was two weeks, not 18 months, two weeks. I put the house on the market for two weeks. And six weeks later, we went to a closing. I made $13,000 in just a little over eight weeks working on this one deal. I did the math on that, y'all. If I did one of those a month, I'd replace my nine to five. In fact, I only really needed to do one of those every other month to replace my nine to five and my truck sales job. I was working like four jobs at that point and doing real estate on the side. So when you tell me that you already have a job and you don't have time, I had four jobs with four different companies when I got started. <clears throat> and this first deal, I was ready to put in my notice because working my tail off versus eight weeks of a couple phone calls, a couple emails, and making twice as much as I was making, three times as much as I was making, it was a no-brainer. Except <laughs> it gets better. Y'all, I didn't make 13000 on my first lease option deal. Okay? Because I told the people that were going to buy it that they had to rent the house from me for $1,000 a month until we got to closing. And they did. So we signed the contract in March with my buyers. They rented the house from March 15th to April 15th and from April 15th to May 15th, $2,000, $1,000 a month. They rented it from me for two months until we got to closing. I made an extra $2,000. So in eight weeks, I made all in, all done, just over $15,000 for a couple phone calls and a couple emails. That is some pretty cool stuff. It's a lot more exciting than regular real estate at $1,200, don't you think? Okay, I don't have to personally be at these houses when they sell, okay? And like I said earlier, I got stuff to do. And it's boring to have an open house. And quite frankly, I don't want to. It's kind of scary, you know? People don't RSVP, you can't screen them ahead of time. What if they come in and they're a serial killer? Like, these are legitimate questions you gotta ask yourself if you wanna be a regular real estate agent and you wanna host an open house on a Sunday. Y'all, people are crazy these days. It isn't like it used to be. You don't have to do things the normal, traditional, boring way, and you don't have to put yourself out in an uncomfortable position. And there's a couple secrets to be able to know when you need to be there and when you don't need to be there. But for the most part, it's a complete waste of time to show people open houses or even to meet people and want to go look at houses because all they got to do is change their mind or something comes up and then they bail on you and you rearranged everything to make it happen. And then these rude people show up or don't show up. It's even worse. It only takes a little bit of traffic to make all of this work. With regular real estate, you got to have buyer's lists and seller's lists, and you have to have mailing lists, and you have to send Christmas cards, and you have to deliver Thanksgiving pies, and you have to have, you know, a big trick-or-treat thing at Halloween, and you got to do a big party for all the singles at Valentine's Day, and you got to have fireworks at the 4th of July, and you got to sponsor the, and it's just never ending what you have to do to stay on top of your market when you're in regular real estate. But in lease options, please, guess how many applications I had on that one 15,000 lease option deal. Y'all put it in the comments here. How, how many? I'm going to check. How many applications do you think I had on that lease option deal? How many? Three. Remember, this lease option deal, maybe five. It, it was on the market for two weeks before I found this one person, maybe 10, maybe 12, two weeks, 14 days, 14 people. Maybe that's a good guess, right? Y'all, I'm going to tell you. Oh, we got one more guess coming in. Maybe 25. Nope. One. 
I had one application on that lease option deal. The first person who called me got in the car and drove to Dandridge, Tennessee from Chicago, Illinois. The next day they showed up, they looked at the house, they made me an offer, I accepted their offer, we went to closing. They rented the house for two months. Beginning of May, we're sitting in the attorney's office and I got a check for $15,000. That was the first seller call that I went on. It was the first lease option paperwork I ever did. It was the first person that called me, wanted to see the house, and it was the first closing I ever had. Eight weeks, $15,000, boom, 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 boom. I was on to something. So let me ask you a question. How would you like to work with me? I mean, what would it do in your life if I could show you how to make $15,000 in the next eight weeks with like five to six emails, five to six phone calls, maybe an hour talking to the seller, and that's it? I mean, you work at a job right now for 40 hours a week and you don't make $15,000. So how would you like to work with me? In the past hour, 30 minutes, however long we've been here, it's been pretty good time so far, right? And I, I want you to know that I can't cover everything. Certainly not in an hour webinar. <laughs> And for those of you that have spent a whole day with me, you know I can't cover it in a whole day either. So, I want to give you an opportunity to get on the phone with me. I want you to book a call with me. I want you to act fast and book this call with me. Let's get on the phone. That's me in the picture there. Uh, I was talking on a strategy call with somebody and uh, taking some notes, trying to help people figure out how they can get into real estate without the old and slow and boring methods, without the license. And I have a great time doing this. It's often said that old habits die hard. And that has been the biggest challenge for me is when I get on these calls with people, they're so ingrained with the way that they've been taught and brought up, and they can see that it doesn't work like that anymore. So that's what I'm going to try to do, is break those old habits, and you will be absolutely thrilled at the opportunities that are just going to start to fall into your lap. I mean, I've been at the grocery store talking up the cashier and waited until their shift was over, went home, made them an offer on the house, and bought a house that day. Like four hours, I bought a house because I knew what I was doing. And you, you'll be thrilled. You get all your time back. I mean, what would you do if you only had to work four hours once a week? And technically the work was because you were at the grocery store. Wouldn't that be cool? You could go to the baseball game. I could tell you how to find houses while you're there. It gives you so much life back when you start to see these results come in. So I want you to get started today. The thing that I want you to do, and this is really, really important, is you have to do this today. Like right now, you have to go. I'm about to show you my website, and I want you to go to that immediately. I want you to put in your email address, put in your phone number, I don't even remember what it says right now, and get started with me today. This is Ashley, and she gave me a really wonderful testimonial because the other thing that people aren't aware of is when they think they're gonna go to regular real estate school, they're like, yeah, they're gonna teach me how to buy houses, and I'm gonna know how to create offers, and I'm gonna have formulas, and that doesn't happen. But when you work with me, I break it down into regular English that anybody can understand, and that's what Ashley was saying in this is that she really appreciated all the time I took into explaining it so that she could go out and make offers immediately. So I want you to book a call with me. And I'm going to give you my website in here in just a second. I promise I'm going to. But I want you to think about it like this. 
on our call, if I gave you the answer that would make all of your real estate dreams possible, would it be worth it to spend another 30 minutes one-on-one -on -one with me? If I could give you that kick in the butt to finally get you moving to accomplish those goals that you've been talking about and talking about and talking about, wouldn't that be worth it to spend another 30 minutes with me on the phone, one-on-one? -on -one? I mean, like, absolutely diving down to your goals and how you're going to be a real estate rock star. What if... I was able to teach you how to get two to three motivated sellers, not desperate, sad, pathetic sellers, but highly motivated, ready to go, will work with you anytime and all the time. Two to three of those kind of sellers every week. A lot of my students get 10 of those a week. One lady got 18 in one week and she had to cut her marketing off because she was so overwhelmed. I mean, wouldn't this be amazing? It'll take all the questions out of it for you. It'll take all the hesitation, all the fear, all of the nervousness, all the anxiety, all of the, oh, I don't know what to do. It would totally be worth it. What is one deal worth to you? Just think about it. If I could show you how to buy one house, just one house in the next year that brought in extra money. Say it brought in 5,000 up front. I'm telling y'all, I don't get out of bed for less than 10,000 on a house now. I, I want my deals to bring me $50,000 or I'm not doing it. Some parts of the country, you could get 50,000 every week if you had the right system in place. So how much would you pay to get those kind of motivated sellers in your inbox, in your phone, calling you where you don't have to feel like you're going out and being the slimy salesman? What if I could get you those every week? What if it was every day and you were in the position like one of my other mentees where she had to cut off her marketing? She had so many deals going on. And I guess that's why you can see others are paying me. I get it done. I'm not only getting this done for me and my income. I truly want to help you get to where you're trying to go on your residual income, on those large chunks of change you want to see coming into your accounts, and on getting your retirement in order, getting your kids as the first priority instead of your job as the first priority. So, are you willing to gamble a few minutes on the phone with me sometime this next week for free? I mean, what do you have to lose? It's free. And there's my website. That's where I want you to go. Start.WhitneyNicely.com. You'll put in your email address. You'll put in your name. I don't really know what it all it asks you for, but go to start.WhitneyNicely.com. And I'll tell you that there's two kinds of people in this world. This lady on the left, she's scared. Like, she has these dreams. She has these goals. They are deep down inside of her, and she knows that she can kill it in real estate. But look at her. She is terrified. She won't even look at that house. She probably sounds like that when she goes to talk to a seller, if she'll ever even get the guts to talk to a seller. And then there's the guy on the right, and that actually is one of my guys. That's Chip. He's in Knoxville, and he is a uh, police officer. He's a trainer. He does all sorts of really cool stuff. That's his power stance, all right? And I told him that he can't go into a house like that, but he can take that charisma. He can take that attitude. He can take that strength in on every one of his deals. And between these two people, y'all, who do you think is going to buy more houses? The scared little girl or the strong man? And I got to tell y'all that I'm 5'3", and I've been a scared little girl. But when I walk into those houses, I am Mighty Mouse. I am a rat on acid. I am the solution to the seller's problem. I am a great, big, strong man. And that's how I present myself. That's how I present myself to the sellers. That's how I get the deals done. And that's how you're going to get it done too. So this is what I want you to do. Start.WhitneyNicely.com. 
go there. I've got an intro video and then it'll take you to the next page where you can sign up to fill out a survey to book a call with me. Or you can go to start.whitneynicely.com slash video. Start.whitneynicely.com slash video. That'll take you straight to my free video training page. And then you can go on through the process through the funnel there and fill out an application to talk to me book a call with me you pick two spots I'll choose which whatever one works better for my schedule and we will get on the call this week we're gonna make your dreams happen <laughs> y'all look that's me that's back in 2011 I think maybe early 2012 but I, look at me I'm nothing special all right I was brought up in a family-owned business I worked for the family. I made $500 a week, $2,000 a month if I didn't sell any dump trucks. If I sold a dump truck, I got an extra 500 bucks. Now, I won't get out of bed. I won't even go to a meeting if I'm not going to make 10 to 15 to $20,000. Most of the time, I'm making $50,000 on these deals. I got to tell you all that. Not only am I nothing special, I'm not good at Facebook ads. I'm not going to teach you how to run a successful Facebook campaign. I'm also not good at rebuilding walls. I have a general contractor's license, and I, I, I can't work the hammer, okay? There's not a start button on it that I can find, and it just doesn't fit, okay? I'm always afraid I'm going to smack my thumb. But one thing I can do is buy houses every single week that is my talent that God gave me and that is what I want to share with you on these free strategy calls so oh I also can't write legal documents <laughs> and I don't figure my own books okay I have an attorney I have an accountant I have people that help me along what I'm good at is buying houses and that's what I'm showing I'm gonna show you how to do all you got to do is go to start.whitneynicely.com Fill out the information, book a call with me, and I will be talking to you really soon. If you want to skip this part, again, you can go to start.whitneynicely.com slash video. Here it is again. Go to start.whitneynicely.com to get started with me. Get on the call tomorrow and get started immediately. All right, does anybody have any questions? Anybody in the chat box have any questions? Anything you want to know? Yes, you're signed up for the call. I'm glad to see that. Yes, 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 we're signed up for the call. I think Kurt's saying that he can't wait to have his call. Anybody else have any questions that I can handle while we are still here? All of this is possible. I came from a regular nine to five up to 17 houses, 19 apartment units, and seven chunks of land, all in about two and a half years. And you can do it too. I know you can do it. It just takes a little bit of effort. And the first step is going to be to book this call with me. Go to start.whitneynicely.com and I will talk to you soon. Oh, hey y'all. All right, anybody have any questions? Any questions at all? I'm here, I'm hanging out. You got it? Okay, start.whitneynicely.com. Go let me have any, let me know if you have any questions and I will be talking to all of you very, very soon, I hope. Bye.